All right. I started recording and uh, we'll go ahead and get this uh, show started this morning. Good Wednesday morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Central Arizona CCIM Chapter Wednesday web webinar. Easy for me to say. Uh, happy to have you guys with us this morning. We're here this morning with Vic Narusis with the Arizona Commerce Authority, and he's going to walk us through some of the incentives being offered by the state and discuss some of the activity and the new businesses that have been uh, coming to the state. Um, just some quick housekeeping. I'm going to keep an eye on the chat bar this morning for Vic, so feel free to um, ask questions as we go along here, and, and I'll keep an eye on that. and interrupt if necessary, or we'll uh, save the questions toward the end. And, um, and then, uh, of course, this is being recorded. It will be uh, added to our website, and we will push it out through social media later. Uh, so if you have to jump off, uh, not to worry, we'll have the recording available for you. And um, with that, Vic, I'm going to turn it over to you. Good morning, and thank you for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Well, thank you, Marina, uh, and good morning to all of you. Uh, my name is Vic Narusis. I'm the Senior Vice President uh, for Business Attraction at the ACA. And, and what that really means is uh, I lead the team of individuals, there are seven others, who are responsible for uh, identifying opportunities throughout the United States and around the world um, for uh, companies to come to Arizona that aren't currently here. Um, we have a whole nother team of folks that work with existing Arizona businesses, but again, uh, my team's responsibility relate to bringing companies uh, to Arizona that aren't currently here, and it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, we have uh, pivoted away from a, a regional focus to a more industry specialization focus. Um, we have uh, a handful of target industries uh, at the ACA that we focus on. Um, and then a number of uh, subsectors of those industries. Um, they're, they're the ones that you're probably most familiar with. There's certainly a lot to do with, to do with advanced business services, uh, both in, uh, in, in the financial services uh, and insurance markets. There's A&D, um, mobility increasingly is a significant um, component of that. Um, there are a number of others, but um, um, th that's kind of our mission. My background, um, like 70% of the people who are in Arizona, I am not from Arizona. Um, I uh, uh, had spent my entire life in uh, the Milwaukee and Chicago areas um, for 18 years. I had been a commercial banker, a regional bank president, um, performed uh, and assisted uh, a lot of uh, companies in their uh, commercial um, and industrial uh, loan financing. I was then in uh, commercial real estate development where I was a site selection and entitlement manager for a suburban Chicago real estate development firm. And then I got into economic development uh, in 2011 um, at a local level. Um, then um, in 2015 uh, with the state of Illinois leading their um, business attraction and retention teams as well as incentive teams and FBI teams. And uh, in September of last year, I came over to the ACA where I'm leading the business attraction team and the foreign direct investment FBI effort. So th that's a little bit about me and a little bit about what we do. And, and today I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, some more specifics about where we're at with the ACA and, and what we do. Um, I think there's a, a strong understanding that we do provide financial assistance and incentives, but very frankly, um, um, that is a rather small part of what we do. We need to make sure that we are solving for the company's business case. Why does the project exist? Um, what, what problem are they trying to solve for by initiating the project? Um, and, and so we go through a lot of uh, due diligence and research in understanding the company and their history. Um, and again, the reason for the project, as well as the specifics of the project. So as part of that, um, uh, I've listed here and shown an example of uh, a number of the non-financial things we do. We help with uh, workforce cost and population analysis and comparison among markets, actually um, facilitate and coordinate all the different workforce partners um, throughout the state to help 
a, a company address their workforce needs. Um, we work directly with the two and four year colleges um, and have specific contacts with people and leaders in those programs to connect up with the programs needed by the business, not just a generic university contact. So that if someone, uh, some company needs a specific type of engineering graduate, that we are connecting directly with the individuals uh, in the universities that work with those students. Um, we do metropolitan cost comparisons um, to help convey um, how Arizona might be uh, more cost efficient than other communities. Um, we do a lot of work in the site search and stakeholder coordination field. Um, very often we're asked to assist the company in identifying sites. Um, through that process, we work through a detailed checklist of identifying the requirements of the project. And then we push that out to the communities around the state. Um, they will always go out to all the communities around the state. Um, although we will identify in many cases that um, some searches will focus in particular markets um, and, and look to only receive responses back from those specific markets. But we wanna make sure everybody in the state is seeing these deals so they have an understanding of the activity that's transpiring. And then once we get those responses back, um, we vet through them. Um, you know, generally I would say half the responses that we get back um, don't meet the critical three to five criteria. Um, and so uh, the client expects us to provide them with sites that meet those critical criteria. Um, we do that, um, we vet them, we put together a, a very nice summary package um, and then send those off. After that, then we work very closely um, with the companies or, or the consultants to coordinate site visits, taking care of literally everything from picking them up at the airport when they arrive to dropping them off at the airport when they leave and absolutely everything in between, coordinating with the communities, with the owners, with the brokers, with the utilities, with the schools, um, and making sure that um, they're fed all along the way as well. So it, it can be uh, very comprehensive, takes a lot of time, but it makes a significant impact in uh, the Arizona message. Um, we get a very extended time period with them to talk about that. And we very consistently hear that Arizona does this far better than any other state. And that, that first impression is critical. Um, AZMEP, apologize for the initials, AZ is Arizona, MEP is Manufacturer Extension Program. Every state has this, uh, but only in Arizona do we have, well, not only in Arizona, Arizona is one of the few states where this Manufacturing Extension uh, Partnership is actually part of the ACA. Um, what this partnership does is it helps manufacturers with uh, establishing their operations, um, whether it's identifying a few very specific higher level uh, employees to helping those companies with um, laying out their manufacturing facility, whether it's um, helping them through the entitlement and zoning process. Um, we have um, six or eight folks on this team that come from industry that have expertise in doing all these things um, and really uh, helps uh, that, that that company establish themselves here in Arizona um, when they're not familiar with Arizona. And, and it's a great service that, um, that uh, really also gets very strong uh, accolades. And then certainly um, Arizona is looking to expand its footprint in foreign trade. Uh, our relationship with the state of uh, 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 to the south of us in Mexico um, is very strong uh, in Sonora and um, our, our governor and the governor of Sonora have a very strong relationship. There is an actual Mexico-Arizona commission uh, that supports that. So um, we, we work with companies also to help them understand the benefits of, of how Arizona might work with uh, operations in Mexico. 
as far as assistance goes, I, I've broken it down uh, into two groups, one for manufacturers and one for manufacturers, rather than just listing out a whole series of uh, programs of assistance. Basically, our programs in Arizona are job uh, and uh, investment related. So in other words, company needs to create jobs and make an, uh, a capital investment um, to be able to receive benefits. With the exception of uh, one or two uh, programs, these are all credits against Arizona income taxes. So companies need to be in a taxable position to take advantage of these generally. Um, they, they do have provisions for tax carry forwards um, so that if a company isn't immediately profitable in Arizona, that um, those tax credits can carry forward. But in the case of the Qualified Facilities Program, that program is refundable, which means that it can be paid out by a check based on performance. And that is uh, an amount of $20,000 for each new job created, paid out over a five-year period. Um, it, is, it can be very significant. Um, there are also significant TPT, commonly known as sales tax exemptions, for electrical taxes and uh, equipment purchases, um, which are very significant to manufacturers, but, but possibly the, the most significant benefit is the foreign trade zone designation for manufacturers that are importing. Um, on the import side, um, there are very significant benefits um, that, that can be achieved um, for those manufacturers if, if they're significant importers. And um, on, from a federal benefit perspective, but Illinois is only one of two states, Texas is the other, where significant property tax benefits uh, are made available um, to the company. Um, it, in the highest case, it's a 72.5% reduction in property taxes. Um, there is currently no expiration on those. Um, so if a company is here for 20, 30, 40, 50 years at that site, they will receive that benefit for new investment. So want to be clear about that. If a company buys existing building, they're not going to get a uh, reduction in their property taxes on an existing building. It would need to be a greenfield, or um, they would also, though, get any uh, property tax benefits uh, that relate to um, additions. Um, and when I mean property, it's both real and personal property. So uh, we've worked on numerous deals where these uh, foreign trade zone benefits over a 10 year period are in the tens of millions of dollars and in some cases hundreds of millions of dollars. We do have job training grants that are available through uh, the program uh, is available through the 31st of uh, December this year. Um, it does uh, it does sunset at this time at that time and there are uh, there those funds can be spent through December 31st, 2021, but the program is coming to an end. It, it's uh, a potentially a very valuable program that uh, we've had a lot of success with and, and um, has been a big part of our attraction effort. And then there's also uh, a state R&D tax credit that goes in addition to the federal R&D tax credit. So for non-manufacturers, um, there uh, is what's known as the Quality Jobs Tax Credit Program. That's $9,000 uh, for each new job created, um, paid out over three years. That is non-refundable. So that is only an income tax credit. They cannot convert that to a check being paid to them. Um, foreign trade zones also, we see those um, really of most benefit to um, distribution centers where they have a large segment of their goods imported from overseas. Um, they, they not only receive the federal benefits of, of uh, associated with foreign trade zones, but also the very significant property tax benefits. Similarly, the job training uh, program there and um, potentially R&D tax credit um, for companies that are in uh, the R&D business um, can, can, can realize some very significant benefits there. There are other programs, but those are the major programs of significance. I understand that there was interest in learning a little bit more about the AZ CARES program. It's a new fund established by the governor's office. 
um, its allocation of money is based on the 2019 census data. Um, it is com it's almost $600 million, um, 441 million of which is uh, direct payment to uh, local cities, towns, counties uh, that did not receive direct funding earlier in the year from the federal government uh, to assist uh, in, in the uh, COVID-19 needs that they may have realized in their community. Um, plus another 150 million to expedite FEMA uh, reimbursement requests for COVID related responses. So it's, it's very significant. Um, I have provided to Marina a list of the communities and the dollar amounts available uh, to each community um, if you'd like to know more and then the full press release that provides more details about that AZ CARES program. But it's very significant and, and can do uh, many good things to help communities when they're uh, facing very significant um, revenue shortages uh, given sales tax reductions or, or other reductions associated with uh, the um, reductions of business we've seen. Some recent Arizona wins. Um, we at the ACA run on a fiscal year, uh, July 1 to June 30th. Our fiscal 2020 year is coming to an end here in a few weeks. Um, we have uh, so far this year closed 128 projects, creating 24,000 jobs projected over five years with uh, $19 billion of investment over that five year period. Some of the major companies and jobs are ESMC, which I think you've heard a lot about and I'll talk even more about in a bit. Raytheon, significant expansion, Open Door Labs, Red Bull and White Claw, two really great stories, almost right next to one another um, out in the West Valley. Um, Atlas Vehicles, Vita Pharma, another A&D, Northrop, and then Nacero, uh, and uh, oh, uh, a natural gas to gasoline conversion project that um, um, will produce much lower emissions gasoline, which will not only significantly benefit, uh, benefit air quality issues in the valley, um, but also work to bring much needed additional supply um, to help um, with our gasoline prices here in the valley. So very exciting projects that, that we've worked on so far this year and closed. Um, a little bit about the, the, the types of projects uh, in those 24,000 jobs. Um, advanced business services uh, make up um, about 40% of that, uh, manufacturing about 20%, and the rest spread out among others. I will tell you that um, we are continuing to work on uh, other projects here. Uh, the last few uh, uh, weeks of the month, um, all very significant. Um, we're, we're hopeful that there are some significant closes here, but um, I, I think we'll uh, get close to adding projected 2,000 more jobs yet this month. Um, it, interesting to note, um, this being the, the fourth quarter of the fiscal year, our fourth quarter from a jobs creation perspective will be our second best quarter of the year despite COVID. So we've seen some very significant activity um, and it's really as a result of uh, our shift at the ACA of focusing more on industries, um, working to become experts in those industries and being known for that among the consultant industry and uh, gaining their additional trust and bringing additional business, being able to talk the consultants language, you know, that they are industry specialists themselves and, and we need to align with that. As part of our activities, we've also upped our sites on company size, and we now, from a uh, lead generation perspective, focus on Fortune 1000 type companies. Not that we won't work with every company that has an interest in coming here, we certainly will, but we've really upped our sites uh, to handle fewer, more higher probability outcomes uh, uh, coming to Arizona. Um, Switching over to industry by jobs, um, jobs within by industry, um, you'll note that uh, technology and innovation is, is huge for us as our business and financial services. I think we're going to see business and financial services 
significantly reduced. Um, I think technology and innovation will also take a significant reduction this fiscal year. Um, we'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, but A and D is also is always a big component of what we do as well. I was also asked to talk a little bit about supply chain opportunities. Uh, I think you're probably aware of Nikola and Lucid, the uh, the, the truck and car manufacturer um, down uh, south between Tucson and Phoenix, and and what their activities are. They are you know now getting up and going and their supply chain will need to follow them. So we're starting to see that level of interest pick up as well. And um, those would be significant opportunities for us all to keep in mind. Um, and then possibly uh, the most recent large one is TSMC, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company that announced um, its location, US location in Phoenix that will create 1600 jobs. Um, they plan to open in 2023. Um, they will definitely be bringing uh, a significant supply chain with them, and that will be a significant add um, to that project as well. I would guess that the number of employees related to supply chain will be probably equal to um, direct employing by the employment by TSMC itself. Those 1,600 jobs are their first part of the project. Um, the amount of land that they are looking at will accommodate um, multiple um, additions of what they have announced. So um, it will be a very significant add to the Phoenix metro area in an already strong semiconductor ecosystem. Growth opportunities. Um, I mentioned a little bit um, about business services and innovation and technology may be taking a bit of a hit here. Um, those tend to be office related. I think we're all seeing uh, the work from home initiative working so far effectively. Um, and we're seeing um, of uh, projects that have been put on hold because of COVID-19, the vast majority of them relate to office space. Um, and so um, we don't foresee in fiscal 21, um, ending June 30th, um, 2021, nearly the amount of office activity that we'd seen in the past. Now, a bit different there, um, counter to that would be cybersecurity. We have a very significant presence in that already. Um, we have a very significant source of uh, employees uh, down at Fort Huachuca down in the southern part of the state uh, where as those military folks come out of their uh, engagements that they are available for um, by for-profit businesses and we're seeing that as a very significant driver of continued cybersecurity activity in Arizona. Um, as part of COVID-19 and, and discussion about reshoring, we're, we're a little skeptical about reshoring uh, as a whole, but we think there are opportunities in highly automated manufacturing. Um, where there are uh, manufacturing activities that still have a large labor component, we probably see those going to Vietnam or the Philippines or even Mexico. But if they're highly automated, we see Arizona as having a strong shot at those. We certainly have. Um, an ecosystem that supports that um, and a significant, one of the most significant um, programs, both at the community college and the four year level in graduating uh, engineers and people with those kinds of technical backgrounds that could support that type of highly automated manufacturing. Um, distribution centers, um, uh, those have been a strong part of the growth in the West Valley. We don't see that stopping. Um, aerospace and defense, uh, a and D, we see that continuing to grow. Um, in addition to mobility, um, any sort of vehicle, um, whether it be land-based or air, uh, air-based, um, we're seeing activity in uh, additional battery-powered vehicles, whether they be three, two, three, or four-wheel, um, in aircraft, um, in in 
numerous areas. So we believe that with Arizona's unique combination of significant engineer graduates with a, a long and deep expertise in batteries and battery research, battery manufacturer, um, in interestingly, the uh, technology related to the semiconductor industry, how this, how Arizona is uniquely positioned to become a hub for next gen mobility. Um, think Detroit, but think modern version. Um, that, that's what we're focusing on. We're seeing a lot of activity there. And the other uh, growth opportunity, not so much in industry, but it would be across industries, California companies. Um, it's too expensive for them to scale in California. 40% of our activity comes out of California. Um, companies aren't necessarily relocating, but they're just not growing in California anymore and increasingly coming to Arizona uh, to scale. That's all I have. I, I deliberately wanted to keep it short and provide some opportunity for questions um, and, and happy to field any of those that you may have. Excellent. Vic, this is amazing information. Thank you so much. I actually, um, uh, I don't know if anybody, I think everybody's muted, but if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat bar. I jotted down a few though, as you were talking that I um, had some questions. So you mentioned, um, you know, early on in the presentation about the sort of red carpet that you roll out for industries that are coming into Arizona. Um, it, obviously, that's a very expensive proposition for you guys to, you know, to, to put all of those resources and pull them together for these businesses. Is there a criteria normally that um, by which you would say, I mean, do you, is, first of all, is that scalable? And secondly, um, you know, if you're, if you're all in, like, what is that, what is that, um, the anatomy of that deal look like? In other words, what's the scale of it? Sure. Um, you know, we, we will do this um, for every uh, company that, that has an interest. You know, I, I, I think um, it, it starts to really become um, something that we do very easily when we're over 250 new employees. Um, it, it works well, though, over 100 uh, new employees to the state. Under 100, you know, we will find creative ways relying more on our local partners to, uh, to run with the ball. Um, we may not necessarily um, be as involved throughout the entire day or days with them um, on those smaller projects, um, but we'll look to have our local partners um, more engaged in that, but make sure that we have completely coordinated everything for them so that they have a very detailed itinerary and know exactly what they'll be doing, who they'll be meeting, whether we're with them or they're um, uh, moving around on their own. But once they get there, they're working with our local partners. So um, it, it is a very high touch um, activity um, and it makes a very significant impression on, on the businesses. It really shows them, especially the California companies, how much Arizona wants to have them here in Arizona. And, and they always make that, that comment. That's so that, and that brings me to another question. And um, so how does, I mean, this to me seems very, um, um, you know, top notch in, in terms of our ability to rally around and, and, and really create a great story for Arizona for new businesses coming in. I'm sure you guys must look at, you know, similar activities in other markets. I mean, how does the ACA stand up against other um, economic development groups in other cities? I'm just curious. So, um, yeah, we, we really do keep our eye on, on the competition. Um, you have to. Um, there's always new ways of doing things and we are definitely always on the lookout for best practices and implementing those. So we do keep a close eye on what's going on out there. And a lot of what I talked about um, is frankly new for us at the ACA. We uh, didn't necessarily previously go to this extent with companies that showed an interest in coming here. We'd focused pretty heavily on just getting uh, incentive letters out to these folks, um, whereas we're focusing on 
um, really their whole project and its reason for being and taking good care of these folks um, throughout the process. Um, you know, it's interesting. So for example, Texas is always our strongest competition, but Texas uh, does not have a state organization like the ACA or some other states may have where they coordinate the activities. In Texas, those activities are pretty much run at the regional level, um, not at the state level. And so if a company is looking at Texas, they find it uh, a little difficult to navigate. Um, they have to do their own coordination with the regional uh, economic development agencies. Um, each one of them does it a little differently. Um, and, and they have to coordinate their entire Texas trip pretty much on their own. Um, whereas we're very different that way. Um, I, I definitely see the Arizona practice as among the best practices in the country and we've deliberately structured it to be that. Interesting. So one stop, that one stop shop, <laughs> I can see how that can, uh, how that could be, uh, you know, cr create some positive momentum for our, our community then. Sure. I mean, just imagine you go to another state you've never been to, you're not familiar with. Where do you start? Who do you talk to? Well, Come absolutely. To especially especially Texas. We'll, we'll so figure big. it out for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, no, for sure. And we've, I, you know, I mean, we can speak to, um, you know, what it's like right now when, you know, different regions are behaving differently, um, you know, so that coordinated effort, I can see how beneficial that would be, you know, to, to really target folks to bring them into our state. Um, I, I love that. Um, so I think it, we're, we're running a little over here and I don't see any questions popping in. I, you know, I'll just share with everyone that um, you did in fact send me the, the CARES supplemental information um, along with the press release. And um, as we, we will send out your PowerPoint presentation, of course, the video has been recorded and we will also include those additional attachments. Um, we just want to be a good source for our community for, for this type of information. Um, if there are additional questions, I see your contact information on the slide. I assume um, our community is welcome to reach out to you directly with any, any follow-up questions that they might have. Absolutely. Perfect. Um, that's it. Well, Vic, thank you so uh, much. This was incredibly helpful. And, um, and, you know, just speaking for myself, I'm so proud that we have the ACA here. And I'm so impressed with all that you do. Um, you know, to support Arizona. I think it's incredible. So economic development is a team effort. We're all part of this uh, and we can be among the very best in the country um, by, by leveraging the assets of all the team members of which your organization is part. So we really look forward to working with you. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, thanks everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your week and um, I'll look forward to seeing you guys soon. Thank Thanks so much. All right. Bye-bye.